Hey guys, it's Maddie, and today we are bringing you big questions about big rigs, where we will answer some of the biggest, most burning questions about all types of trucks, as well as the industry in general. In today's episode, we will be walking you through all the different types of trucks in Australia, as well as why they differ from the rigs driven here in the States, with What's Up Down Under. Let's jump right in. Although Australia uses many of the same truck manufacturers to make their models as the U.S., over time, Aussie big rigs have adopted their own unique take on trucking with their world-renowned road trains, also known as land trains or long combination vehicles. These road trains originally consisted of a traction engine pulling multiple wagons. Once the wheels of this supposed road train started rolling, the rest was history. Skipping ahead to post-World War II, a man by the name of Kurt Johansson began building what would soon be recognized as the modern road train, with surplus military models, including a Diamond T T980 tank transporter truck and two homemade self-tracking trailers with both wheel sets on each trailer built to help steer. This rudimentary road train could easily negotiate tight, narrow roads and travel the tough Australian terrain, which caught the attention of freighter trailers in Australia, who went on to improve the invention and become innovators in terms of transportation machinery for the Australian market by beginning to build self-tracking trailers for Johansson and countless other customers. As Australia serves as a home to some of the harshest environments on Earth, with some of the most dangerous, desolate, and difficult roads to drive, it only makes sense that they would require rigs rough enough to wrangle their way through the trying twists and turns of the Aussie terrain. Because of this notoriously tough travel, Australia is also home to some of the longest and heaviest road legal road trains in the world, weighing anywhere up to a whopping 200 plus tons. Due to the extreme environment in Australia that differs greatly from other parts of the globe, many creative safety measures have been taken in order to make the most efficient and cost-effective transport possible, including strict regulations regarding registration, licensing, weight, and overall driver experience that apply to all road train operators around the entire country. Because these road trains are the most rugged and reliable rigs used around the area, they are driven almost exclusively to transport all types of materials throughout the country, including anything from fuel to livestock to other kinds of general freight. Despite the fact that almost all Australian rigs are in fact so-called road trains, there are still a few different types of these freight hauling trucks that help distinguish them from one another. First and foremost, there are A-doubles, which consists of a prime mover, towing a normal trailer with a ball hitch affixed at the rear. A fifth wheel dolly is then affixed to the hitch, allowing another standard trailer to be attached and the potential for even larger loads to be hauled. There are also B-doubles, which are comprised by a prime mover towing a specialized lead trailer with a fifth wheel mounted on the rear, towing another semi-trailer ultimately resulting in two articulation points. These B-doubles are also known as B-trains or tandem tractor trailers outside of Australia and are used as one of the most common road train configurations due to their inherent stability when compared to most other twin trailer combinations. These improvements in stability are largely due to the lack of a converter dolly and the addition of a turntable mounted to the forward trailer. A feature that, above all else, ensures its continued use and global acceptance, as well as sets the beloved B-double apart from its other trailer arrangements. Besides B-doubles, there are also B-triples, which are essentially the exact same as a B-double, but with an additional lead trailer placed directly behind the prime mover. These big long B-triples, with lengths of over 114 feet, are generally only permitted on specified routes, primarily including many industrial access points 
and export areas in and around the ports. Although the B-Train principle has been thoroughly exploited throughout all of Australia, Australia's National Transport Commission has proposed a national framework for B-Triple operations, including basic vehicle specs and operating conditions that the Commission anticipates will take over the current state-by-state -state approach and largely discourage the use of B-Triple trailers for interstate operation altogether. In addition to the big bad B-Triple trailers, there are also AB triples as well as A triples. An AB triple consists of a standard trailer with a B double behind it using a converter dolly and typically looks something like this in order. Standard, dolly, B double, standard. An A triple, on the other hand, is only permitted in certain places like the far north portion of South Australia and consists of three full trailers with an average length of over 175 feet long. There are also even bigger and badder BAB quads that consist of two B doubles linked together with a dolly, with the prime mover first and foremost, followed by the first B train, a dolly, and then the second B train. Last but certainly not least, dog trailers, also called a pup, is any trailer hooked to a converter dolly with a single A-frame drawbar that fits into a pintle hook on the rear of the trailer, allowing for an abundance of articulation points and very little roll stiffness. Although road trains are renowned for their appearances all throughout Australia, road trains are also used by several other European countries like Finland, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Germany, and the Netherlands, as well as places like Mexico, and on certain occasions, even the US. With Australia's wide open spaces, as opposed to the United States cramped cities and states, road trains are able to haul much heavier and larger loads and ultimately allow for the most cost-effective and environmentally friendly freight hauling to take place. Despite the fact that these long and drawn out road trains certainly have their distinct disadvantages, especially in other countries, it is their even longer list of advantages that put them on top down under. Thank you guys so much for watching our big questions about Big Rig series. Before you leave, make sure you like the video, check out the other videos on our channel, and subscribe. We have finally reached our goal of 30k subscribers, so thank you all so much for your support for the show. Next stop, 50k. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything else you'd like to talk to us about, please be sure to tune in to our live podcast, The Chrome Corner, Wednesdays at 12 p.m. noon Eastern Standard Time, and discuss all things Chrome with our host, Dave Coleman. If you'd like to stay up to date with the new projects we have coming, please follow us at Jack's Chrome Show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Be sure to buy your big rig the best chrome for your home with some especially sweet, spooky-themed stainless sails on our website at jackschromeshop.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. And remember, folks, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack. <laughs>